now what we're going to do is uh, um, we take a look at how to do this uh, do this cl uh, community cloud, how to set up instance on community, uh, community cloud. First, you go to this web page. Um, there's an experiment, hardware discover. This is really where uh, you start to try to see uh, where are those um, um, uh, facili uh, facilities or instances as you for to you. You're sometimes you probably use just a small job. You don't need a kind of 48 core, 40, uh, 24 is enough. Or sometimes you need a big job. You need a, you know, over 200, 200 cores like this. You need to find all those uh, machines, those configurations of all these instances. Uh, total storage as well. So this shows you the, uh, the disk, the disk, disk space of the machine here. Yeah. Uh, for this class, uh, since we will all, all work together, uh, I want to make sure that all of us have some machines available to us. So do the compute as well. So there are about 194 machines here available. Then we can say, uh, we can see all these on tech site. These are mean the site, uh, site is on TAC, TACC is uh, uh, takes the advanced, advanced computing center, uh, a very proud uh, institution of Texas. So they have two CPU cores, and these are the 48 threads. It means that how many uh, logical cores you can use if you do parallel computing. RAM size is 100, and you don't have to select that, but it's only choice, right? 122. Uh, the disk space is uh, between 200 and 400. Okay, you don't have to start here every time, every time. You don't have to start here every time. So let's keep doing, keep, 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 keep going. Um, here we click site, Chameleon Cloud at TACC, click that. You should log in. Okay, let's bring on the IO pause thing. Continue. Okay, now I have, um, you should have this 821365. You see that? This is your project number. I have two projects on my name, so there is another project. Please remind me. This is one for our class purposes. So here, there are so many tabs here. Something useful, something not that really useful. Um, overview, just give an overview. Instance, how many instances currently you have? Um, uh, for the, I don't, I don't want to overwhelm uh, you with a lot of information. Let's just start with how to create one. Uh, so here, you see there are reservations here. Click the lease here. For this to work, first you need to create a lease. Tell the scheduler, say, okay, I want to have a lease about this machine. That's the that's first state, first state. Um, before that, we want to know the availability the specific availability of all those machines. What we can do here is post the calendar. We click post calendar. Okay, now we have no type. What do we just say? We want to see the Haswell, right? Compute Haswell. Haswell, probably this one. Yeah, let's see. You see how many machines are there. So you see the bars here. I mean that this one is 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 uh, um, is being using. I mean reserved for this time. So this has been another um, another person who has been reserving uh, this machine uh, this machine for this time. Right? Um, let's find a let's see this task delay. Some machines here. Um, it's kind of like the R. This is a big machine. Okay. okay. There are so many of them here. Let's use this one. Okay. Task at Lake R. If you want to know the configuration, the hardware configuration of this, of this, uh, this machine, this type of machine, what you can do is okay, go back to the hardware scammer. Computer 
82. Okay, we have 56. And these machines are 96 cores, 96 logical uh, machines, processes you can use. Their memory size is 192 gigabyte, and uh, the, uh, most of them uh, have a disk space between 400 and the one terabyte. So let's reserve this cascade, cascade lake R. Go to lease, click lease again, create lease. Lease name, just a random lease name, uh, say, uh, NJ class today now uh, start date you can specify a date uh, start time uh, specific time I just leave it open that is now next you can you can you can you can specify seven days maximum then at the fifth day when there is about forty eight hours at, until the end of your lease you have you will be able to re renew the lease again for another five days. So the total time you can reserve this machine is seven days, seven days, make sense? Yeah. So for this case, two cases, just to use one. As tomorrow, same time, and time, just a little bit there, same time now, then go to next. You reserve a host, minimum, maximum, just a little bit here. If you say three, three, put three here, it will reserve three machines at the same time, three instances at the same time. Um, compute cascade cascade lake R. This one. Let's keep it next. Reserve network. Usually you don't need that, but for advanced users, if you want to use storage, you can. You, you need to click that one. Now you don't have most of the time. You have to reserve floating IPs. Uh, you can reserve the floating IP in a different interface. I will just leave it here. Create. So it create a lease name like this. If you create, uh, if you create your own list, I should be able to see your list here as well. Next, let's go to compute instance. Click here. Now we want to launch an uh, instance here. You see the launch instance. Project name, the selection, instance name. NJ class, reservation. I found my own reservation. Otherwise, I will use yours. I then uh, this is my own reservation. Next, click next. Image, what kind of system you are going to use? You know, sometimes you use uh, Ubuntu or CentOS, whatever. I use Ubuntu sometimes. Okay, I want to use the latest version. This one, if this one with, uh, with this symbol, means that this is maintained by the main cloud team. You click that, this button, click that. Okay, now I have it here. Mean that I will install this instance using this interface, using this image. I click next. These are bare metal. There are almost no other options. Bare metal means uh, there is a, really what it is, bare metal. There's a bare metal machine there. It's just a, a machine. You will see uh, two weeks from now, we will just go, go to the center. Then you will see what are those bare metal for the end, those kind of data center. Just a little bit there. Next, share network. You don't need that, just a little bit there as well. Uh, this is uh, located with a network host. Leave it there. You don't need this. Uh, you don't need to, to do anything about this for this uh, user scenario. Security group, leave it there as it is. Keep here. This is important. So there are different ways you can assess uh, the community cloud. Um, you need to create a key pair. Um, if you don't have one, create a key pair. Just a create, uh, click a create. And then create a key pair. Key pair name, I will use my name. Follow me. All of you can follow me on this day. 
Even you don't know how to do that, follow me on MC state. MJ class, SH key. Okay, now I have this page. Click create key pair. Okay, this is my private key. This is my private key. The key means that uh, the private key is like your key. It's your key, private key. You need to keep it private. Like the key uh, of your home, of your apartment. You need to put it in your pocket. I copy and paste it. Copy private key to clipboard. I save it. To a notepad. Desktop CC key. Okay, I close it. Click down. All of you already created the key pair. Copy and paste the key private pair. Now I have this key pair. I have this, it's called public key. What is here? This is called public key. Public key, you can think it as a, uh, as a lock. Uh, this, this, uh, this I, I always find the lock, lockers a lot confusing uh, uh, in English. So in a gym, you, you think there's a gym, right? In a the gym, there's a locker. The locker can be used by anyone as long as you put a lock there, right? So this is your lock. Once you put this lock on any of these lockers, which you, which, which are, which is a kind of an instances machine here, then that machine is yours. But you need to have a key. What you saved on your desktop is the key. You can open that lock so that you can access the locker. That makes sense. So this public key here is your locker, uh, is your lock, and the instance in your locker. And you have your public, you have your private key in your pocket, which is on your desktop. Now let's move next. Maybe here, we don't need that. Server group, leave it there. Schedule hints, leave it there. Metadata, leave it there. Now we're going to launch instances. Click that, launch instance. Now it's exciting. You see, we are building three machines are building. Sorry, for the key type earlier, was it an SSH key? SSH key, yeah, you okay. should choose SSH key. Okay. You see, there are already an error with this uh, errors. You have an error with this one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem. Again, not a problem. Just to delete that, uh, try another one, probably work. If it doesn't work, just to try another one. It's just how it is. Um, I, I, have, I, have, I have no way to figure that out as well. We still need to finish another state. Now you see all the instances you have, it has an IP address, you see here. This IP address is internal IP. You cannot access this IP through your SSH internal. These are IP address are internal address. What we need to do is we need to create a floating IP. Click network. Here, floating IP. Click this floating IP and allocate IP to project. Click here. It's just a one selection public. Public. Click allocate IP. Okay, you're going so fast. Now we have the public IP. I don't know which one is mine. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as every, all of you have a, a sign one, that's okay. This IP is the external IP through which you can assess these instances. I associate it with, okay. Rachel, yeah, great. Okay. You should put the put a, put a name there. Just create one. Uh, yeah, you should all do that too. Let's say this is mine. Don't take it. Associate, click associate. So it's just as I will use this one for you. Select a pod. So this one is my machine. I associate it. <laughs> wow. 
Why don't you say spawning and you can still kind of like spawning when it is uh it is it is, it is it's creating yeah creating, creating the machine. Yeah. Now okay, let's go back to instance. Take a look what you look like now. So uh, okay, this is mine. Now I will be able to assess this machine to this IP. This is IP I use to SH. Yeah, this is IP I use to SH. It's just one, um, which sometimes it'll take about 10 minutes. That's why I'm really I uh, do this early. Next, for Mac users, um, Rachel and uh, Amy will help you figure out how to use the uh, pop private key you saved on your desktop to assess the instance. This is the IP. This is the IP they use to SSH. I'm not a Mac user, so I don't know how to do that in Mac. But usually it is a Mac terminal. You use a Mac terminal. So in in a in a in a in an interface where all the app there, you just search terminal, open that terminal, and it is SSH. And then your username, username is CC, use a CC, CC at, CC at. Yeah, okay, let me do that. Let, 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 let me try to do that on my end. <clears throat> okay, mine is running as well. So this is a lab, this is a Windows. Uh, let me see if I can have, how to, no, it's not installed, PowerShell. This is H C C at S S H power. Yeah. Okay, so I'm running. Oh, now look at that. I'm on my machine. So was it I? It's I. Yeah. Oh, I. Let's see how powerful this one is. Ninety-six powers. You want to get in this page? It's true. Let me exit this. So this is if you if you are using Windows, use this PowerShell. Um, the way you can open PowerShell, there is two, there are different ways you can open PowerShell. But if you use a, a Mac, you go to you open Terminal and go to the directory. You don't have to, but you need to know uh, how to assess your key, the location of your key. Right. So here, what I do is okay, I save my key on my desktop. So I just uh, click Shift. Uh, I press Shift on this keyboard. The Shift here. I press the Shift on keyboard. At the same time, put the right, uh, push the right button in my mouse, and then there is the Open PowerShell. I open that. It will be something like this. So the command I use to assess machine is sshcc at. This is the IP address I specified, and this is. Minus I tells where I should find the key, and this is my key. This is a key I use. Press enter. Now it's good. Now this is my machine. CC at CC is a username. Different system they use different username. Like a CC is a, so just a, a, a short for Chameleon Cloud, right? And if you use root, usually people use root, but root is not a recommended. Here, if I change this to root, it will tell me this. We log in as a user CC rather than user root. User root is a power user in the system, which you, with, uh, with which you can have the all the kind of the privilege of the system. But you can switch to root. 
So if I enter my machine, I can switch user as you R O T root password. I need to enter password. No, I don't want to do that. Okay. Mm. S U D U S U root. Okay. Now I'm not in zero. I go to my local directory here. This is uh this is the uh, root directory right now. Who is on this page? Who already enter your instance? <laughs> so it has 96 cores, the memory is 189, 187 gigabyte, and swap. Swap is sometimes you use it. Uh, if the memory is not enough, you use it. Um, yeah, this is are your running. How do you get this page? So edge top is the command you use to get the uh, the, the view of this of your, of your system. So if you run parallel, you will see these calls will be 100%. It tells you how many percent you are using about all your logical. There is another issue, which is the permission of your key file. If you have this yeah. problem, uh, usually that will say uh, permission. Create unprotected privacy. To open 644. Uh, six, four, four. Okay, attention, we are not done yet. So now you still need to do additional step here, which is uh, also challenging, but a little stressful. Now you need to install the Anaconda Python because the bare metal machine does not have that. So here we need to download this version, this uh, Linux version, click that, copy links text. And here I'm on my machine, right? W get, I need to download this. Now I'm downloading the Anaconda version of the Python. Now I have it. Bash, execute, and I'm execute this package. This state, I'm installing this. I say yes, 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 just ignore them. Although they're very important, I strongly suggest you read throughout them and accept them. Yes? Yes, uh, the location just, uh, I just uh, accepted before. Uh, if you want to specify elsewhere, that's okay, but uh, uh, usually it will make more, uh, make life uh, harder if you specify elsewhere. I just accept before. <clears throat> now it is installing the Anaconda version of this, uh, the Python. By running in it, yes, yes. Okay, now you have it installed. It is not loaded. How you load it as you now you mean that you refresh you uh, switch user or you, you just refresh the current environment now it is loaded is you see once it is loaded there is a base here mean that i mean the best environment this is an environment this is a basic environment so in and in, in, in python you really create different environments for different jobs so this is basic one now i have everything in place Okay. Okay. I don't know where where am I. It's just a uh, problem. Problem with uh, with the terminal. Not my problem. It's just the computer's problem. <laughs> Not your problem too. It's just the computer. Um, SU root studio. Ah, I just clear. Yeah, the PowerShell is a little weird. Why, why isn't that we can't just use regular command prompts? Use what? Just regular command prompts. Uh, Probably you can, but the problem is, um, um, you know, I don't know how to open the command prompt at the exact location I want. So for the desktop, I can just press shift and the right click, it is here. 
Right. I know, I know, okay, yeah. this PowerShell is command here under the this directory. Right, right. It's a command line, usually you, what you do is so okay, CMD, something like that. It is it is under my repository. This is definitely not place I hope it to be. Right. I need to CD probably um, desktop or something here. LF, LF, space, dash, yeah. It's just a mess. Yeah. Rarely, I rarely use it because I because I uh, I use the X shell. If you use Windows, I strongly suggest the ultimate solution is this X shell. If you're a Mac user, you use terminal. Terminal is already there. X shell is a good friend for uh, Windows user. I found it very very powerful. It's very useful. Uh, I tried many many other uh, SS uh, shell uh, kind of. This client, including Putty, this one is very small. You just download it. It's a very small, uh, several hundred of uh, k, uh, several hundred of k. It's very small. The very small uh, and one file here, <clears throat> like this one. It's just a <coughs> install it, but it's not a convenient as this um, X shell. For Windows user, I strongly suggest X shell. And they provide free version for uh, for home and uh, student and or academic personal yeah. purposes. Okay, are we all good? Yeah, we are not very. A uh, few of you are not catching up. That's okay. Uh, follow up the video. I will post the video later and uh, uh, <clears throat> take a look at this uh, assignment. Because in the next, the following part, what you need to do is something you should be able to follow the instructions. Install Anaconda Python, run the Jupyter Notebook server with password and FSL for encrypted communication. If you click here, running a notebook server. Save an image of your instance. This is also uh, easy as well. So you have this um, font endpoint managing uh, command line, you use a command line here. So to follow this page, managing images using the CLI. Let's do that right now. Let's do that right now. Download image, uh, retrieve, viewing, sharing, editing, upload, download. Sudo. SCC snapshot. If you want to ignore, I really use this one. Here. Here. F user. Um, <clears throat> the image. The image means the instance, right? Because you see, uh, SU view, SU root. I need, I want to switch to my root. So here I'm uh, under root on this user, root user, which has the highest priority of the entire system. And now what I need to do is I want to make an image of this because I don't want to start everything. Today, we are not installing a lot of stuff. In the future, you probably will install a hundred packages that, not, that does not come with Anaconda Python itself, right? So you want to take a snapshot of this entire image. Next time you can load from that image directly. I will explain that later. So CC, SUDO, SUDO CC snapshot F. Do you see here? Um, I actually have instruction here. So, so you uh, save an image. Click this link here. Image here. The CC snapshot utility. This is a command you use. And this is F means you just ignore the arrows or anything. I usually use F. Image name. Just the image name is. Um, Usually I use timestamp. This is the timestamp because I know this is the latest image. Um, what's the date of 20? 22? Let's assume it is 22, okay. 21, 23? 22, okay, 23, <laughs> nice. Okay, now the system is creating a image of this machine. So, what you will get is something like this. Mm 
image. So here image, I can search my image. So you see these are my image. So next time I can launch directly using this image instead of use other images. So then I have everything there. That makes sense? So it's easier, it's faster, it's faster. You don't have to set up the computing environment every time. So the image is like a computing environment you already created. Yeah, you already created, it's everything. It's just everything, yeah. If you remember, if you have a working directory, which include large data files, you don't want to include those, right? Because that's what, I think they have a cap on the image. And if your image is too large, it will take a lot of time to create an instance, right? So you hope that the image only have only has the information about the system and your computing environment. It does not have all those your data. Your data need to be stored separately. 